Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going through the massive eight-game League of Legends slate, um, which is uh, during LOL Worlds, which is, this is really a slate unlike anything I've seen. You have eight matches, all single-game matches, all going one after the other. So starting at 8 a.m., 9 10, you know, all the way through the last match at three o'clock. So you're going to have like eight hours of League of Legends. <laughs> uh, and what makes this so wild is, you know, they're all single matches. It's, it's that is completely max variance. Um, and it's going to make for a wild slate. I think that if you play the chalk, whoever that even is going to be, I think you're just kind of asking for long-term failure. Um, the problem is, is that you're not exactly sure where ownership is going to go. Um, I, I ran projections, I ran lineups, and it looks as though that a lot of, you know, a lot of ownership could come into FlyQuest and based on their projections, um, but if you think about this, you know, uh, of all these favorites, they, they are the, the lowest, well, if you consider the top esports one to pick them, FlyQuest is the least likely to win of all the favorites. I mean, you're really relying on the, the, the kill projection to be, to be good here. And when you have a seven match slate and you know eight seven other matches that can beat you to play a chalk like that is is very very i think foolhardy the other thing again to remember about league of legends lineups is they sometimes just the way the pricing works just kind of forces you into and out of certain combinations like i i think you'll find if you try to put you know, BLG and or Hanwha Life into the, you know, big four-man stacks or whatever becomes hard. So they might end up being lower owned as a result of that, specifically Hanwha Life. Um, so what, what I'm going to do, there's a couple of things I'm going to do. Number one, uh, I'm going to go through just the normal process of how I'm going to be doing, you know, it's the regular MME. And also... Uh, it's a very interesting slate because it's the LOL world championship final where, you know, we all, not we all, like a lot of people try to qualify for over the last, it seems like forever. And they're finally playing it off. They have 200 entries and I was fortunate enough to be able to max out the seats. So I have eight entries in this. And I will say that, that I ran pretty hot with respect to this type of slate that they're going to be running, because this is exactly the type of slate where you want to have a lot of entries. I mean, it's max variance, you know, it's not like, I don't know. It's not like a two or three game slate where you know exactly where the chalk is going to go. And you just have to kind of just hope you don't, you know, you pick your one or two to get unique I, if you can, but here there aren't, there are so many combinations that can get there that, you know, that, that every entry matters. So I'll just say that what I think I'm going to do in the actual, in my distribution in, in the, in the qualifier is probably, probably have eight different four man stacks um, as my eight entries. I just think it's that random, these one game slates that I don't want to have over an overwhelming, you know, exposure to anybody. Um, ooh, who is this? Oh, Bo was that Bogarts? The Bogarts uh, flew, flew, flied out. So um, how I'm going to approach that is different than how I'm going to approach the regular uh, GPP build. Um, and that's the thing that we're going to go over today is how we're going to do the regular GPP, GPP build. So we started by uploading the projections like everything else. And 
we are just going to build here. So we don't need to build 5,000 lineups, but let's just for the hell of it, build a thousand lineups. And the other thing I want to do is I want to update my contest file here because um, it's an old one. These here. And this way we run the Sims, it'll know, you know, it'll know what we're in. Uh, overwrite. Okay. Or we build six that we're that we're on now. All right. So it, it says eight, but we're gonna we're gonna do more than that because we're gonna be playing forty in that um in the big GPP. So once this is done. I think what you're going to see is probably a whole bunch of fly quest. I don't know what it is. I mean, Saber Sim and its initial builds, they they really they really get a little bit chalky. Only when you get into the Sims and and the screwing around does uh the Saber Sim really distinguish itself. So at some of these ownerships, yeah, so inspired. What? All right, let's just see. Okay. So if we didn't make any changes, this is what we'd end up with. We'd end up with like literally, well, shouldn't say a hundred percent because why is it giving me only eight lineups here? And I've had this problem with Saberson before. So there's 43 lineups here. So why is it only showing me as far as my right? Why is this happening? Well, let's 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 do this again. Let's let's rebuild the lineups. How about that? We'll rebuild them with the new contest files, and maybe we could. Yeah, okay. I think this is a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know why it was showing eight or whatever. This seems a little more like what we're looking for, you know. Now, what's interesting is that um, Top Esports is showing up as as you know such a big part of this uh, and I think it's almost like MMA that this this mid-range kind of like pick them fight sort of just makes a lot of the other builds or combinations work so let's just see what we get here all right so Atlanta down three runs the guy gets a single facing elimination does a dance on first base I'll just you know I'll, maybe I'm old, but I think it's I think it's just ridiculous. He literally they're down three runs in the eighth inning, facing elimination. He gets a single, and he does the freaking wave pretty much on first base. I mean, come on. All right, so again, sorry to have to go through this again, but all right, now at least we see what we're doing here. So entry exposure. This is actually pretty a pretty good distribution here. Oh, and there it is. Oh, my God. And here comes the home run. Home run by Michael Harris. So we've got kind of a game here. Now five to four. So if we don't make any changes here, we're going to get 37% G2. 30. This is actually a pretty good distribution. But let's just see what stack. And we're also getting mostly four threes, but some four twos. And even though it's it's a you know it's not a best of three or whatever, I still want to go as much as I can on the four threes. Um, but then when I do that, it looks as though. So what am I looking at? Lineup exposure, entry exposure. I guess entry exposure. No, because entry exposure means what we have now. Okay. Lineup exposure is what they are suggesting. All right. So now at least I know what the hell Saberson is trying to do here. So he really wants you to play a 100% fly quest, which we're not going to do. Let's run the Sims. Well, it's five to four over there. I guess the, uh, the waving in front of first base, I guess that motivated... Is that motivated the guys acting behind them, I suppose. Uh, 
Okay. All right. So it did the the Sims, and when we did the Sims, then okay, now we're getting a little bit more circumspect here. Now we're getting sixty two percent fly quest, and now we're opening up. We're getting wow, thirty percent DK, twenty five percent team liquid that's extremely surprising let's go to more min uniques what are we doing min uniques two doesn't really change things all that much you know if we did this this kind of crunched it a little bit more but this team liquid is really showing up as a um as a, a, a interesting bit of leverage here very, uh, very interesting. So let's take a look at the stack exposure. We're at four threes, which is good. Let's make sure that the captain position, we don't have any like support in the captains or anything like that. Because sometimes you can. Let's just see. Um, actually, let's look at the exposures. We'll do it that way. Exposures. I and mean, I really don't want any support captains today. Um, yeah, it looks, uh, looks pretty good here. So I guess we're just going to go with it. I mean, it looks like the FlyQuest, uh, ADC is the highest owned captain, but it's not like that overwhelming either way. So let's go ahead and do this, but let's make sure that we only put it in the, um, in the, uh, in the shock blast because I'm I'm really I'm I'm good with the <laughs> with with what I have in the fantasy in the uh, LOL World Championship. So let's put this in. Um, boom. Okay. And this is good. So it looks as though that this Team Liquid play is where we're going to try to get different in the big GPP. We're definitely not going to play that in the World Championship, but one thing that's interesting is that I don't believe... Yeah, I do have a couple of dupes. Actually. There are two lineups I have that are in both. Um, but aside from that, there's no duplication. Um... Like you see some of these, like the, the thing about the team liquid, it makes these Gen G four mans work, you know. So anyway, uh, that's that's what I'm uh, that's what I plan to do uh, in the League of Legends slate. And again, uh, how I'm going to deal with the World Championship is going to be a little bit different. Um. I guess that's pretty much it. I, I guess I'll, I'll I'll post this. I guess I could post this early. But I just don't want to actually say who I'm playing. So we're going to unfortunately not be able to do that. We're just going to post this at 8 o'clock so the people that are investing in it can sweat it. And if you guys wanted to look at the process, you could look at that after the fact. But uh, yeah, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.